Hello. I have wanted to do this type of video for quite some time. I want to take you guys with me to the bookstore today to come book shopping with me. We all love a good trip to the bookstore and it's sort of perfect timing with the Bewitchathon going on because I need to pick up some spooky books. Now, I have already ordered quite a few online. You will probably have seen my book haul at this point. So I've definitely already picked up some Halloween, fall horror books for the Bewitchathon specifically, but there's some I can't get online or I need to look for in store, so I thought we could do that together today. I am particularly looking to collect some more manga and some more of the horror books, maybe classics, things like that. So specifically, I am looking for volume one of Tokyo Ghoul, which is quite hard to find, it seems. Um, I ordered Demon Slayer volume one online, but it's not gonna be here for quite some time. So if I, by chance, am able to find that, then that'd be great too. I just hate that when you go to the store to get manga, it's like impossible to get a hold of. I want to perhaps get some new Junji Ito. I do still have one of his books that I own that I need to read, but I'm dying to read Tomi. I said that in my TBR video. I just know I'm gonna love that one. So we'll see. If I run into that one, I likely will be picking up Tomi as well. As far as classics, I've not read Frankenstein and then a friend is reading Carmilla. So I thought maybe I could get those as well if they're there. I don't know, I just wanna see what they have. I want to browse the horror section. I'm not even certain that Barnes & Noble has a horror section because I've never like specifically went to the horror section just for browsing during a shopping trip to the bookstore before. So I suppose we'll find out together. I know they have a large variety of a selection for mystery thriller, which isn't really my jam or my vibe for the shopping trip, but we'll see. We'll see what I run into. Unfortunately, by me, there is not really a good independent bookstore. There is one used bookstore that rarely has anything I'm interested in and it is really expensive for used books so if I'm gonna buy a used book I'll probably order it somewhere online for a less expensive edition there's a Barnes & Noble about 30 ish minutes from where I live anything else is probably closer to an hour away and even still I'm not certain where there's a good independent bookstore it's really a shame and it makes me quite sad if I'm being honest like I would love a good independent bookstore by where I live when I went camping this summer and went to Horizon Books up in Traverse City I was like oh why can't there be one of these near me by where I live because I'd be here all the time I guess it's probably a good thing that there's not because they had just so many cool editions of books I'd never seen before. So that is the plan and let's go. I thought we could listen to a little Polyphia on the way to the bookstore. I was listening to Goblin by Josh Mallerman, but I'm feeling like a jam session. So I can't insert the music or won't be able to monetize it, but put on some Polyphia and let's jam.
you. I should not have bought so many books, but there it is haunting me in the background. Spooky books galore. I'm really excited about the ones I got. Okay, it's a couple hours later. We're home from the bookstore. I hope that you guys enjoyed that little montage of footage. So I did purchase four things today, all for the Bewitchathon. But in saying that, they're definitely things I was interested in anyways, things I know I want to pick up, even if it weren't for the Bewitchathon. A couple of them were unexpected, so I'm a little bit excited. I wanna show you one of the prettiest books first. So you guys know that I'm reading more Stephen King lately, and I am reading this book this month. It is a Patreon buddy read, and that is The Stand. Um, orange and yellow are two of my favorite colors. I absolutely love them. So with the contrasting black on this cover, it's the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. I really enjoy, this is so hard to see with my French doors there, the font and text on the spine and this back image as well. Um, and it has gold sprayed edges. So this was $25 for the Barnes & Noble Classics editions, but I truly don't think that's a bad price. I mean, if I were to go anywhere and buy just your regular paperback version of this stand, it's gonna be probably $19.99 anyways. So I feel like to pay $5 more for this is really not too big of a deal. So I've had my eye on this edition for quite some time. And the thing that I don't know is I don't know the text, what edition of this is. I know that I'm listening to the audiobook for this and I have the lengthened authors edition. So it's the one that Stephen King released without all the edits, I guess. I don't know, it's the longer version that I am reading and listening to. I always hear back and forth about what people prefer. Everybody recommends something different. I hear just as many arguments for the abridged shorter version as I do the full length author's version so I don't know what this text is but I do know that I'm listening to the long version so let's go ahead and open this up thank goodness that sticker is not actually on it there we go beautiful now you can see the spine a little bit more don't you guys just think this this edition is very very pretty I like when they have the ribbon book Ooh, look at that it's like the hazard um, the hazard symbol, but lime green. Lime green's also my favorite color. I am loving this. I've never opened it up before. So we got a little test tube vial going on there. And more of the same. Oh, the complete and uncut edition. So there we go. Quite interesting. I, I don't know what this is, but I keep, I saw that on the other, the older cover too. Copyright 1978. This was first published in 1978. I think it'll be very timely, mid-pandemic. I'm so excited to read this. And I like how each chapter has its like section break like that. This is just really pretty, you guys. So I'm, oh, what's this? Oh, it just says like book three as it separates. Is there a little map in the back? There's illustrations. Apparently there are also illustrations. I'm quite excited about this purchase. I can't wait to put it on my Stephen King shelf. I love, oh, I just now realized, you guys probably saw this before, but this is also the test tube thing. So this is my first find at the bookstore today. Okay, and my second find is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition for Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I've wanted to read this for quite a while. I've never read it before. It does fit the prompt for horror by a female author for the Bewitchathon, so that's exciting. Uh, it just says on the back with the lightning, you are my creator, but I am your master obey. And I'm quite looking forward to reading this, um, even though I know I've tried it before and I was like, Ooh, okay. I didn't know this is what I was getting myself into, but I think if I go into it with the right mindset and sort of prepare myself for something a bit different um, in the storytelling format, then I will enjoy it more because it's like, is it all written in letters? I don't think so. Yeah, it is. It is all written in letters. I tend to love that type of thing. No, it's not all written in letters. I don't know. But yeah, we have the red sprayed edges. I do really enjoy these Barnes & Noble exclusive classic editions. And I got Dracula last year since I read that last October. So I think it's kind of fitting to get a new exclusive edition for Halloween. It's a horror novel every year. I almost purchased this same type of edition of Edgar Allan Poe stories, but I do already own a book of his complete work. So I thought, I'll save that edition for next year's reading escapade and just read what I have this year since I have all of the options in that. So this is the second one. As I said, I have never read this classic, 
but I really am looking forward to experiencing her writing. And there are some other things that I would like to read inspired by this. And even there's the Junji Ito manga that I saw in the store. And I was like, I really want that, but I think I should read Frankenstein first. So that's the second. I guess those would both be classics, right? Um, the third thing, I finally bit the bullet and did it. And I'm not happy about it because my bank account is not happy about it. However, my mind is really happy about it and I'm ready to go. So I finally purchased Tomi by Junji Ito. I have wanted this book for so long. I've picked it up three billion times in the bookstore and now I finally own it. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I better not drop this like I dropped the other one, but isn't that stunning? Murdered again and again, one girl always comes back for more. Tomi Kawakami is a female fatale with long black hair and a beauty mark just under her left eye. She can seduce nearly any man and drive them to murder as well, even though the victim is often Tomi herself. While one lover seeks to keep her for himself, another grows terrified of the immortal succubus, but soon they realize that no matter how many times they kill her, the world will never be free from Tomi. So, I mean, the art in here is just beautiful. Um, there's always a little bit of color and it just, it already seems haunting. Like look at her, that knife, all those men. I mean, come on, this is a book for me. And look at this, a very haunting. I love it. So, oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited to finally get to read this and read more horror manga. If you guys have been with me for a year now, you'll know that last October I figured out horror manga is my jam. I literally had like nightmares from reading Shiver by Junji Ito last October. It has one of my biggest triggers ever because I have trypophobia and other, like there's a certain image that I would just almost see every night when I went to bed because I was so scared from it. So this is the third thing that I picked up. Okay, last but not least, this is the most unexpected one, I suppose. I didn't think I'd find this copy, and it was once again ridiculously expensive. I have such a hard time not buying used books or paying like full price for books, but I picked up Carmilla by Sheridan Leif, Leif, by Sheridan Leif Fenu. I'm so sorry, I'm butchering that, I know. But I actually quite like this cover. It reminds me a bit, and I'm only thinking this of the name of uh, Castlevania because Carmilla is my favorite on that show. I absolutely adore her. And it says the cult classic that inspired Dracula. So your girl didn't know that Dracula was inspired by something. I thought Dracula itself was a classic, had no idea that this little novel is what inspired it. So it says, succeeds in inspiring a mysterious terror better than any other writer. M.R. James, there's the back for you. And the spine, I think the spine's quite pretty too. In an isolated castle deep in the Austrian forest, Laura leads a solitary life with only her ailing father for company until one moonlit night, a horse-drawn carriage crashes into view, carrying an unexpected guest, the beautiful Carmilla. So begins a feverish friendship between Laura and her mysterious entrancing companion. But as Carmilla becomes increasingly strange and volatile, prone to eerie nocturnal wanderings, Laura finds herself tormented by nightmares and growing weaker by the day. Predating Dracula by 26 years, Carmilla is the original vampire story steeped in sexual tension and gothic romance. Ooh, ooh I didn't know that. So um, yeah, my friend Amanda is reading this as well. So I got the idea from her. It is quite short. It is less than 200 pages. So that'll be conducive to me reading a lot this month as well. So I'm really excited to own this edition. Oof. Uh, okay, so there you Please don't fall already. I hate breaking brand new books. Okay guys, so this is my little bookstore haul today. I had fun shopping with you guys and I'm super excited to add all this horror to my shelf. You guys know I live for the horror genre. So let me know if you guys have read any of these books, what you think of them. Let me know if you guys like these come book shopping with me videos cause I've never done one before. So I don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> But um, here's what we got today, friends. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.